What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, and welcome to another VGC 2022 Series 12 tier list, I, I tier list video, I guess. Anyways, I, I just messed up that entire intro, but we're going to pretend like I didn't. We are going to be doing a early metagame tier list. Uh, basically, what this is based off of is my experience on the ladder at this point. I've been able to hit like top 200 on the ladder, which isn't much because it's very early, but I have played quite a number of games and I feel confident in giving my early game, like my early metagame impressions on what's good, what's okay, and what just isn't going to work in this format. But before we get into that, do me a favor, leave a like in this video if you enjoyed it at any point in time, subscribe to the channel and turn notifications because I bring you daily VGC content. That's for my comment question of the day. What do you think is the best Pokemon in the format and what do you think is the worst Pokemon in the format? Anyways, let's uh, get into it. And of course, I'm talking about restricted Pokemon, and we won't be including the not fully evolved restricteds like um, Cosmog, Cosmo, I and mean, we obviously won't be including base Calyrex because you're just never going to use those anyways. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, so starting off with Calyrex Ice, um, something, something I'll, I'll note is S is going to be basically like the top of top tiers. Like there, you can use it on most every team. D is going to be like, hey, just don't bother using this. Actually, I'm just going to change D to... There are really no F tier restricteds in my opinion, except maybe Kiram. Um, so let me actually just add that. Let me let me add a let me add a row below, and we'll we'll just call that Kiram. Because <laughs> because Kiram honestly is like its own little guy. Like he is just not done yet, <laughs> and that's why I didn't include like base necrozma or anything and obviously this is a series 8 restricted tier list nothing's changed since then um and no one's made a series 12 specific list so cure them you know uh but i think we can put calyrex ice safely in a tier calyrex ice is consistently going to be good um they managed game freak basically what they did is they took the ice type and they said okay what if it was good and then they made it then they made this basically calyrex ice its ability to bypass any preparations you can make for it, like giving your Pokemon like a Yachi Berry or giving an Incineroar a Shooka Berry. The fact that it has Unnerve built into as one, just turning that off, like it, it just makes it absurd. Um, its damage output, getting hit by like a Life Orb Glacial Lance, you don't res you don't resist that. Nothing resists that move. Like, yeah, you can switch in your Incineroar and intimidate it, but you're still going to take like 30%. Your best bet versus Calyrex Ice is good board positioning, or outright making sure it doesn't get to get off his trick room, which is very hard to do. So it's consistently good. It loses to Zacian if you have good board positioning, because obviously you don't want to get plus two max quaked. Uh, Mimikyu next to this thing is absurd because not only can it reliably set up trick room with mental herb in disguise, but on the following turn, it's able to shadow sneak your Calyrex Ice, meaning that you're able to get a free plus two immediately. And that even makes like Intimidate Cycling very difficult to do because if they can call the Incineroar coming in, you're still going to get hit by at minimum like a plus one max quake. So yeah, you have to play smart versus this thing and that just makes it consistently very good. Obviously, it pairs well with many Pokemon. I've seen it next to Groudon for Sun Cores. I've seen it next to Kyogre just to make sure you don't get hit by fire moves as hard. I've even seen it next to like Necrozma Dustmane, which is absurd because uh, that just loses to Incineroar hard. But yeah, it's it's really cool. Calyrex Shadow, um, that one, I, I want to put it at A, but I also want to put it at B. I'm going to put it at A. Um, the reason I was hesitant is because I haven't lost to Calyrex Shadow yet. Uh, it, but I, that, that, that just might be my team building and my experience because I'm so used to facing Calyrex Shadow that I just don't like playing against it and I hard counter it. Um, it hates Incineroar, obviously, but it has the same attributes as Calyrex Ice in that it's able to turn off, um, it's able to turn off Unnerve and it's able to get a boost every time it KOs something. Uh, it doesn't like facing off against Porygon 2 and it doesn't like facing off against Incineroar. Those two are very, very clean, um, counters to it, right? But... In other things, it's sort of, it's it depends on the matchup more so than Calyrex Icewood, which is interesting. Uh, it is able to deal decent damage to Pokemon like Kyogre, but it also doesn't ever like one shot it. Uh, you have to support it very, very well. You need to use like Whimsicott next to it or Fake Tears and Tailwind. Um, or you could even pair it next to Kyogre as a way to not only get rid of its hardest counter, which is Incineroar, but um, also take advantage of the Tailwind from Tornadus. So it's kind of an interesting Pokemon. Uh, I don't really see a lot of people running Max Quake on it, but I have like faced against um, like Scarf, Calyrex Shadow and stuff. Uh, so they could possibly fit Mudshot onto that set. 
Uh, but typically you're just going to see like life orb hyper offense sets or uh, even I, I've seen substitute like once so far, but I don't think that's that great since it usually wants to dynamax. So yeah, uh, it doesn't like facing off versus Eveltal and it pairs well with um, what, I, what did I see it paired with. I usually saw it paired with Kyogre and I occasionally saw it paired with Zacian. So yeah, I, I would say it's A tier, but possibly B tier. It's just it, it's like on the verge of being B tier for me. Dialga, I'm going to say Dialga, Dialga is going to be like a C for me. Um, basically, Dialga is interesting in that it's a steel dragon type, meaning it's only weak to fighting and ground, and there's only, you know, one of each of those types in, in terms of restricted Pokemon. Uh, but those are relatively common in terms of, you know, just general team composition. Um, you'll see at least a ground type on every team, in my opinion, at least like 99% of the teams. Uh, Groudon is its worst matchup, uh, and beyond that, it like tanks hits from pretty much everything. Um, or I guess also Zygarde. I forgot Zygarde existed for a sec. Uh, but it's able to set up Trick Room. It's very bulky. It's basically just like an alternative to Palkia. Um, if you don't want a Water type, if you'd rather have like the Steel type for some reason, it does like the same thing as Palkia. It sets up Trick Room despite being decently fast, and it's just like a strong special attacker. It might run Weakness Policy, but it's probably going to run Life Orb, and there's not really much beyond that. Next up is Eternatus. Um, I want to put it at C, but I'm also tempted to put it at B. I think I'm going to put it at B. The reason I put Eternatus at B is because I think it's pretty underexplored. Um, it's similar in attributes to the other Gen 8 uh, restricted Pokemon, at least the base game ones. Uh, Zacian and Zamazenta both have moves that can... That both have steel moves that can deal double damage to Dynamax Pokemon. And Eternus has that with a dragon move, and on top of that, it also has uh, Poison Stab, which I think that combination is actually pretty decent for this format. Um, Eternus, while it might not be able to Dynamax, is able to deal with many Pokemon that would want to Dynamax. Uh, obviously, it's like the bane of... <laughs> of like dragon type dynamax pokemon uh like palkia especially i guess um it's able to eat a hit from xerneas and also it's just general bulk is super nice you can still run like the cosmic power stall set uh, but i wouldn't recommend it i think this thing would much rather be offensive in this format maybe i could drop it to c i'm, I'm like on the verge of saying it's c but i yeah i'll say it's c i'll say it's c uh, it's just too underexplored uh, i think it could be good it probably wants to be paired next to uh, either Calyrex or Kyogre. I definitely wouldn't recommend pairing it with Zacian strictly because you want one of your restricteds to be able to Dynamax uh, given the opportunity in this format. Uh, Giratina. I'm going to put it at D. Uh, I, every time I put Giratina at D, there's one or two dudes in the comments who are like, Giratina's good, I swear. I've ran like a weakness policy set with Kumve. Uh No one ever sees it coming, even though there's a Kumve and a dragon type next to it. Uh, Giratina is good. I, I run like a Tailwind set. It's, it's not. It's not. Neither form of Giratina is all that great. Um, but it could work. Like, no restricted's that bad except Kiram. Uh, but it, it could work. Basically, I, the only niche I could see this thing having is if you ran the Grissius Orb and put it next to Zacian so it didn't lose to fairies, uh, and then you run like a special set you, so you can't be intimidated, and then you go for max. Uh, you you go for like your your max phantasm on something to lower their defense and then Zacian cleans it up but that that's like it I don't I don't really see Giratina having any usage beyond that next is Groudon I'm gonna put Groudon as a I I think I think if I put anything in B it's gonna be Groudon um, Presbyterian Blades is too finicky and the fact that it relies on Venusaur is is really like the main reason it's not that great. Uh, but it is good. Like, B is is very good. Like, S is only pretty much for Zacian. <laughs> I'm going to spoil that right now. Uh, but Groudon being able to set up the sun and switch in on Kyogre, granted you give it enough special defense, is really nice. Uh, the fact that it's able to enable Chlorophyll users like Venusaur is really nice. It makes Charizard disgusting in this format if you can play it correctly. Um, but it's not Groudon itself that's that good. It is, it is, it is Venusaur, and we saw that in other series where people would run Kyogre and Torkoal because Torkoal was pretty much just a sunsetter and that's all people would use it for. Groudon is in that same boat. Yes, it can Swords Dance. Yes, it does pretty okay versus Zacian if you're fast enough uh, or if you're bulky enough, you know, if you manage to get in the situation where it's not going to one-shot you. Um, but yeah, I think it's just, it's good, right? It's not bad, but it's, it's B at most, in my opinion. You could maybe make an argument for A. I would just strongly disagree. 
Ho-Oh, that is going to be a C tier from me. You're going to see a lot of C tiers. Um, Ho-Oh is interesting in that it hardwalls Zacian and Zamazenta and uh, Necrozma Dust Main and a couple of other restricteds, uh, but it hates Rain. And Rain is such a good archetype right now that it's just not, it's never going to be that great. In previous restricted formats, uh, specifically the one restricted format, uh, we actually saw ho -Oh see some usage at first, but it didn't stay because people realized that we were only really using it for Sacred Fire, and Entei did that as well without being intimidated, so Entei was like a better ho -Oh. In Restricted Dynamax, though, it could be good because of Max Airstream and the ability to use Weakness Policy pretty well. Um, however, you know, in doubles with like Rock Slide and stuff, and the fact that it shares a typing with many other Pokemon that are arguably just as good, uh, despite not being restricted, it, it makes it hard to justify using it on a team unless it's absolutely necessary. Like, the best partner this thing has is probably Xerneas, or if you have something that's super, super Zacian weak, like, I don't know, maybe Eveltal, if you're that down bad about facing Zacian, like, go ahead and put a freaking... <laughs> go ahead and put a freaking Ho on there and then lose to a Rock-type, I guess. Uh, but yeah, Ho is okay in the same way that these two are okay. Um, Kyogre, that's going to be... I think I'm going to put it at S tier. Uh, I, it might share... It's going to share S tier with, with Zacian, in my opinion. Kyogre is very easy to use. It is the Pokemon that you give to someone who is, has never played a restricted format before and wants to get some wins on low ladder. Um, and it's also the Pokemon that you give to someone who has played this game for years and just knows how reliable of a workhorse this thing can be. Kyogre is a horse, if you didn't know. Uh, but yeah, it, it, the fact that it sets up rain, the fact that it's at a really good speed here, um, the fact that it has access to not only Origin Pulse, but Water Spout, which is even stronger and, you know, can be disgustingly strong at the beginning of the game. Granted, you have proper board positioning and speed control. It's, it's great, right? It only has a couple of bad matchups in the format, uh, namely... It doesn't like Palkia, and that's like it. It also, I guess, doesn't like Rayquaza, but that's kind of up for debate. Um, Eveltal is also kind of rough versus it if it's running Assault Vest, but like that's it. That's it. And even then, like two of those are questionable at best. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty much just Palkia. It has a bad matchup versus. So you compare this thing with so many Pokemon, Calyrex, Shadow Rider. Uh, you compare it with Groudon for double weather, and that's been kind of effective. Uh, you could even pair it with Zacian if you just want to make sure Zacian has even less weaknesses, so it doesn't lose to Incineroar and it doesn't lose to Groudon because of the rain. So yeah, uh, Kyogre's busted. Obviously, Tornado speed control stuff is great. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put Lugia in D tier. Lugia is a one-trick pony, and not in, not not a, a one-trick pony in a good way like, like Xerneas. It is a mediocre one-trick pony that only does weakness policy stuff. <laughs> And that's it. Uh, you could try to run stall. It's not great. It loses versus Incineroar like 100% of the time. It loses versus um, Eveltal like 100% of the time. It doesn't like facing Zacian. It doesn't like facing a lot of things in this format. Calyrex Shadow Rider and Calyrex Ice Rider just have a field day versus it. So yeah, like it's just... There are some like Lugia enthusiasts and I feel for you guys. I also have Pokemon that I wish were good. And, you know, this one just isn't it. <laughs> Next up is Lunala. Um, I think Lunala is going to be a B tier for me. Lunala has always slept on at the beginning of the format until we realized just how absurd uh, Shadow Shield plus Trick Room is. It's going to be good, I guarantee you. People will say, ah, it loses to Calyrex Shadow Rider. It, it, it can take a hit. It, believe me, it can take a hit if you build this thing the right way. And then you just Moon Guys Beam everything. And with Dynamax, it just gets even better. Um, yeah, like it's it's literally just like a Trick Room special attacker with a lot of bulk to it. You could even run the, the Meter Beam set that we saw in previous formats. So we're going to see Lunala usage rise further on in the format. The bulkier it gets, it happens every single time. Just hear me out on that. I think it's going to be how it is. I think Lunala is a solid B tier. Mewtwo. It's going to be another D tier. It doesn't do anything that the other psychics don't do, except have good coverage. And it's, you know, its main drawing is Focus Blast and Aura Sphere, and it has to run Focus Blast over Aura Sphere so it can KO things. But Aura Sphere has perfect accuracy, and Focus Blast missed like 30% of the time. So, yeah, it's uh, not reliable, not that great. This thing's gonna be a. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it at D tier because there's very little reason to use uh, a this thing over Lunala. It yeah, it gets it gets um. Prism Shield or Prism Armor, 
and it's slower, so it's a better Trick Room Pokemon, and it does a couple of things that maybe Lunala can't, but it's it's pretty much just Lunala, but but more focused into the role that it wants. Uh, it, even then, like it doesn't make it better. It loses to Incineroar, and it loses to a lot of things in this format. And the Prism Armor, it, it doesn't save it. Prism Armor hardly saves Necrozma Dust main from Calyrex Shadow Rider. It hardly saves it, and you have to run a lot of special defense. Like, what was it called? Um, the Krasma Dawn Wings, it doesn't get saved. Ever. So, yeah. NDM. Uh, that's gonna be a C tier from me. I am a big NDM enthusiast in non-Dynamax, uh, but I think in Dynamax it is very much worse because of Intimidate spam, uh, and the fact that other things just get better in the face of it. <laughs> like, I... I guess the reason it was good in non-Dynamax is because um, it was easier to tank hits. Even though you can Dynamax this thing, uh, it was easier to take hits when nothing could Dynamax, and I think that's a big part of it. Uh, obviously, it's now possible to run two restricted, so it's more easily it, it's more easy to find a counter for it on your team if you were to face off against it. So it's it got marginally worse. I would argue B tier in non-Dynamax, but in in Dynamax, I put C tier. It's just like a good Trick Room weakness policy Pokemon. Palkia is going to be a B tier for me. Uh, it's great, but it's like as about as good as Groudon, in my opinion. Uh, Palkia is able to hard wall Kyogre. It's able to eat hits from Zacian if they're not running Play Rough, which every Zacian is running Play Rough now because Eveltal is on a lot of teams and Palkia is going to be on a lot of teams, and it's just a good move. Uh, you used to not have to run it because it was like, you know, like a, it, it was like a, a redundant move to have on it. Uh, but yeah, I think Palkia is going to be great. It's just a Trick Room Pokemon that uh, is like a great water type. It has great offensive stats at like 150 special attack. Uh, and the Dragon typing allows it to use uh, Stab Max Wormwind to uh, not only lower attacks, but just deal a lot of damage to quite a few restricted Pokemon. Rayquaza, uh, that's going to be a C tier for me. And that might sound interesting. I think Ray plus Zacian, aka Ray Z, or Ray Z, a man you have never met before, or Helicopter Addict. Uh, I think it's good. Basically, it's a niche Pokemon that allows Zacian to not get outsped by G-Max Venusaur in the sun. And it also turns off rain, so if you're running a bulky Zacian, as you should be to get ahead of the curve for when eventually Zacian are running max special defensive again, um, it will also allow you to tank hits from Water Spout much easier. So yeah, uh, I think it's a, a good Pokemon. I don't think it's like the best, but I think next to Zacian, it is good but on its own c tier you know um you know as as its own pokemon where you could pair it with anything it's like c but like nextization it's it's pretty good uh reshiram i am going to put this one at i'm gonna put it at c uh it doesn't like quite a few things it gets hit neutrally by kyogre uh, play rough does a decent amount of damage to it from zacian uh, Groudon is like one of the hardest counters this thing could have if you're on special defensive sets. It hates facing off versus Palkia and both of the um, Calyrexes are able to hit it neutrally. And if you're in either one of their ball courts, you know, if you uh, are facing off against Tailwind Calyrex Shadow Rider with like a helping hand user next to it, you don't like taking that hit. If you're facing off against Trick Room Calyrex, you don't like taking that hit. It's, it's basically just like a bulky fire type. Like the dragon type hardly comes into the equation. Um... And yeah, like it's it's hard to find a use for it other than maybe if you were running it next to like Groudon for the extra sun boost, or I guess if you were running it next to, I, I don't know, there isn't much of a partner for it. Uh, maybe like Kyogre could be fine if you don't want to lose against like Rillaboom, like that's a good check. Uh, and also it can like probably deal with Zacian okay. Like if you run like, I don't know, it's not uncommon to see fire types on a, on a rain team strictly just because it helps them with grass types and steel types, so... Yeah, I mean, maybe you could explore it, but for now, it's like a C tier. Gotta throw this in here, because I just realized the tier list didn't have the Curum forms, but Curum White, I would put at a solid C tier. I think it's really just only going to be viable uh, if you pair it next to Groudon to help check against Zacian. Uh, obviously, it needs some Tailwind support, so Whimsicott wouldn't be that bad next to it. And Curum Black is pretty much the same story as uh, the Zekrom. You definitely want to run that thing next to Kyogre uh, to help out. Uh, versus a couple of problem matchups for it, but also you could run it next to Groudon if you really wanted to, uh, to make sure you didn't lose to uh, Zacian as well. However, I will say that it would make your team very, very much intimidate weak, so keep that in mind. Sorry I missed these on the list. Anyways, uh, let's get back to it. So Galio, 
This one, I we always sleep on Solgaleo, but it's it's another weakness policy Pokemon, but this one you can't burn and it hard walls Asian, so I want to put it at B tier. It's like top of C tier in my opinion. It's it's gonna find usage eventually. Um but it, it doesn't like facing off against uh Calyrex, it doesn't like facing off against New Lunala, uh it doesn't like facing off against Eveltal or Kyogre. I'm gonna say C tier. Um but yeah, like I think it could be good. It's literally just going to be like better Metagross though, if we really think about it. I, I think it'd be interesting. Uh, it probably also is going to want to run Trick Room in a lot of situations. Um, yeah, it's it's sort of like Palkia where it's fast, but it runs Trick Room. Uh, it, it's it's like the in-between point between Palkia and like and like NDM, right? Except it doesn't get Intimidate Spam by NDM or like NDM does. Uh, and also it like <laughs> is able to Trick Room pretty well. So yeah. Xerneas, uh, that's going to be C for me. I, I think Xerneas is hard to use in a format with Dynamax. Its damage output isn't as good as you want it to be. It's uh, it's really weak to Zacian, the best Pokemon in the format. It's just kind of hard to justify. Maybe it could be B tier, but it, the fact that it's like in the same league as in like as like Rayquaza in, in this tier list, it just kind of speaks... Uh, to how it's kind of mediocre with when Dynamax exists. It was great in Series 10, don't get me wrong, but in this format, it's, yeah. Eveltal, uh, that's gonna be another A tier for me. I think Eveltal's phenomenal. Uh, it's super bulky, it's great support, it's good versus Kyogre, it's good next to Kyogre, it destroys both the Calyrex forms, and it, just foul play. The fact that you could run, like, full bulk on this thing and still one-shot certain Pokemon uh, is absurd. I think it's really good. And next to Zacian, using Doggy Darko, like, that's probably one of the best cores in the format right now so i love it i think it's a good pokemon and the fact that xerneas is down here and like hardly getting used is a huge testament as to like how much um how much of a field day eveltal has in this format next up is zacian the best pokemon in the format i'm not ranking these within the tiers but if i were zacian would be right there uh zacian is great run it bulky immediately stop running max speed it's not good run run bulky zacian so it lives hits people don't think it will a bulky Zacian can take like less than 50% from Calyrex Shadow Rider uh, Astro Barrage and that, that'll that really mess with your opponent. It can take a Water Spout from full from Kyogre. That's great. Just, just run it bulky. Anyway, Zacian is good versus every team. Whenever you have a Zacian in your team, it's hard not to bring it. Calyrex Shadow Rider, Annihilated. Calyrex Ice Rider, Annihilated. Eveltal, Annihilated. Groudon, sometimes Annihilated. Lunala, if you break the Shadow Shield, it's Annihilated. Palkia, arguably the only hard counter in the game. Uh, I guess also Necrozma Dust Main, but uh, Ho-Oh as well. But they're all so niche that it's like hard to see. Basically, like the best Pokemon in the format lose to Zacian if you play your cards right. And Zacian is one of those Pokemon that requires you to have very, very, very good board positioning to beat it. And yeah. Zamazenta, C tier. Normally, Zamazenta would be D tier or possibly Curum. But now, <laughs> it's got a buddy. Uh, I'm going to put him here. They're, they're best friends. Uh, basically, Zamazenta and Kyurem go... Or, not Kyurem. Zamazenta and... Um, and... Uh, Zygarde complete form go hand in hand. Uh, Zamazenta is able to provide good Snarl support to pretty much any team and coaching support to good Restricteds uh, like Groudon and Eveltal. Uh, even ho if you really felt like it, I guess. Uh, but mainly it's going to be coaching and snarling for its buddy Zygarde because Zygarde becomes nearly unkillable when you Dynamax it and get in your complete form with a couple of coil boosts and coaching is effectively just coil plus the coil that your Zygarde's setting up itself. So yeah, it's like you're getting two coils off in the same turn, which is absurdly fast paced bulking. Uh, and with Finny in the back, neither of these two can get burned and Zygarde gets its Misty Seed and then all of a sudden you can't kill it and it's just running you over with Thousand Arrows. So while it's a very bulky, slow, setup oriented play style, these two kind of belong together in C. I think they're okay and you can get away with it in tournament. It could even win a tournament in my opinion. Uh, it'd be hard, but you could definitely win a tournament with these two if you really, really knew what you were doing and didn't get crit. Really, that's the big thing. They get crit a lot. And finally, Zekrom. I'm going to put Zekrom in the same tier. Most of them are C tier in my opinion in this format, which isn't bad. There were a lot more D tiers in the last time we were playing single restricted, but now it's double restricted and a lot of things have a lot of usage. Zekrom does good next to Kyogre because Kyogre deals with its hardest counter, which is Groudon. And that's like it. <laughs> that's like the only use I could find for Zekrom. Uh, I might actually build that. That seems kind of cool. But also, um, Zekrom is able to bypass uh, Lightning Rod, which is really cool because of 
its uh, ability that is slipping my mind. It's basically just Mold Breaker. <coughs> but yeah, I, I mean, that's really it. It's like bad versus Intimidate and Dragon Stab isn't that important in this format. So it's really just an Electric type. But it's ha it has a really high attack stat at like 165 or 170 or something. Uh, so yeah, I think it's pretty okay. You can get away with it. And that's like the theme of this format. You can get away with it. Do you want to use Giratina? You can get away with it. Do you want to use Eternus? You can get away with it. Do you want to use Zygarde and, and Zamazenta? You can get away with it. Do you want to use Kyurem? Eh. Anyways, that's the tier list, guys. Um, if you agree with me, let me know in the comment section down below. If you disagree with me, let me know as well. Comment what you think the tier list should be. And uh, yeah, leave a like in the video if you enjoyed. Join my Discord. I'm trying to get some artists in there because if they want me to show off their art as the background of my Showdown Live videos, then that'd be great. And I will see you guys in... Oh, also Patreon. Check out the Patreon. There's bonus videos on Patreon. Have a nice night, guys. Bye.